Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And we're big fans of batteries. But they don't just have to power your car. We're going to tell you how we solve the problem almost everyone has. And for less than you might expect. Next on In Depth. We review a lot of cool batteries on our sister channel, Now Let's Review. Yeah, a lot of smallish batteries have started appearing on the market lately, which are great for camping trips, working on remote sites and road trips, but they don't solve a problem that many, many of us are having. Blackouts. That's why we were really excited to share with you the sponsor of today's video, Anchor Solix. So they reached out to us with their latest battery, the Anchor Solix F3800 Portable Power Station. This battery holds 3,840 watt hours of energy and can pump out 6,000 watts. That's pretty big. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna be hefting that just to charge my laptop. That's not what it's for. See, here's a problem that many people are experiencing, especially with the wildfires in California, the freezing temperatures in Texas, and the hurricanes in Florida. You're talking about blackouts. Yep. So my sister and I were talking the other day, your aunt, and she was telling me about a recent blackout she experienced where she lost all the food in her fridge and her home office was obviously offline so she couldn't even continue working for almost two days until the power came back on. That sounds like a problem for work from home people. Yeah, did you know that a lot of people, as many as 35% of Americans now work from home? And many people now live so far from the office that they couldn't even drive to work if they wanted to. Right. Okay, but how does this battery solve that problem? I mean, are you really gonna run extension cords all over your house every time there's a blackout? You don't have to. I don't get it. Okay, so check this out. Anchor Solix sells this home backup kit that I think you might find intriguing. So how does it work? It's really quite simple. You got the battery and a transfer switch. This panel here. You or a qualified electrician run a few circuits from your home's electrical panel to the switch that you want to keep running during a power outage. And then when the grid goes down during a storm or whatever, you just flick the switch and voila, you've got power. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's it. I can just flick the switch and I'm on backup power. So I don't have to crawl under my desk and unplug things and plug them into a battery and... Nope, okay. it's, it's really straightforward. But I get it because when I first learned about this system, I was a bit overwhelmed. My brain didn't quite understand how it would work. So the idea of installing the switch and running wires, it raised these questions in my head. And you know what? Let me show you how we installed it in under an hour. And I think that's gonna help your brain too. Okay, so show me how this works. Yeah, so you got your battery. Yep. The 3800. And look at it, it rolls. It's nice. on wheels, right? Okay. It's got a handle. Then they give you this 10 foot cable that comes with the transfer switch. So this plugs into the 220 here, goes up into the transfer switch. Okay. The transfer switch is wired, and this comes with it too, this uh, conduit. So this all comes with it, all the wiring goes up into your panel. You're seeing some B-roll now of Ernie and I doing the wiring. And I know it looks complicated, and if you're the kind of person who's like, that's too complicated. Yeah, then hire an electrician. This took us, like I said, an hour. So I think a qualified electrician could probably do it in half an hour. Okay. Here's your switch. Okay. So we've got this one circuit now, which is some lights and an outlet or two in this office. And it says line, right? Because we're on the grid. So pretend that uh, there was a grid power failure, right? So I'm going to flick this to off just to simulate that. Okay. And uh, so now, oh no, there's no power. So yeah. I come down to my basement or whatever, and I flick this to generator. Lights come on. Generator, line. And now I'm on grid power. Now I'm on battery power. Easy, and you can choose that for any of these. So what's really nice is, let's say I had refrigerator, gas, uh, my office, and I was like, oh, but I just heard this, the power's gonna be out for days and days and days. I only wanna run a couple things, like my fridge. I could just turn on my fridge and leave other things off. And what are these? These are 220. So what's nice is you can take these bars out and turn them back into 110, or you can add bars over here and turn these into 220. So regardless of what you've got, they've got you covered. So this is basically just another electrical panel. Yep. These are, these are breakers. These are just regular old breakers that you find in a breaker box. Yep. And what's nice is in our original panel, we haven't touched any of these breakers. Th those are still our breakers. So it's like we're almost have double breakers. I see. And so only when you're on generator power, like if I flick this now, mm -hmm. doesn't affect our lights because it's we're not being used. Right power. But if I'm on generator and I flick it, that does affect oh, our okay. because now it's that, right? Okay, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And the whole point of this system is not to replicate your, you know, is not to back up your entire house. You're just backing up the things that you need. The other cool thing is I have an app, right, for the battery. So I can see how much power I've got 745 watts that I'm using right now. I could be up in my bedroom in the morning and decide to just shut off the battery. And then oh. 
I shut off the battery. Or I could turn on the battery in the morning. I and see. That would take care of doing it remotely without, oh, there's my lights, without having to come down to the basement as well. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, so that wasn't nearly as complicated to install as I thought it would. Um, how much money does this cost? Okay, so Anchor Solix often runs deals. So the price that we're showing you today might be different depending on when you're seeing this. But check out our link in the description for the best deals. Okay, so wait, 3600 bucks for a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery and the transfer switch and all the wiring. Yeah. Now, to put that in perspective, if you get a grid-tied battery backup system, that could easily start at over $10,000. Okay, so the Anchor is quite a bit cheaper. Yeah, I mean, when I was talking with my sister and I told her about grid-tied whole battery backup systems, the second she heard the $10,000 price tag, she was like, okay, I'm out. That does not fit my budget. But when I told her about the Anchor Solix 3800, it fit her needs and her budget. But just like a lot of you watching, in her case, she didn't need her whole house backed up during a blackout. She just needed a few key things. In her case, she would love it if her fridge could stay on mm -hmm. and if her office would also stay on. And you know, it's not that hard to also plug in your heating system. So if it's like a gas or an oil heater, that would only take, you know, like 100 watts of electricity to just run the blower. Right, exactly, because the flame is coming from something else. It's just the fan that's blowing the heat around the house. And so it just relies on that 110 to stay on. Exactly, and so it can run for hours and hours and hours on a battery of this size. And so, yeah, you get to keep your heat on in the winter also, which is really big. Okay, but is 3,800 watt hours enough to do what she needs? Well, it really does depend on the length of the blackout and what you're running. But let's take her example, right? The average fridge in America uses about 3,800 watt hours to run for about 24 hours. But that's if you're using it regularly, like opening it for breakfast and opening it for lunch and opening it for dinner and opening it for a midnight snack. So if you knew that the power is going to be out for the day and you kept it closed, it's going to use way less power. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you keep the fridge running for two or three days without, you know, having everything in there spoiled. Right. I mean, which just happened to you, by the way. Yeah. And an office with a laptop, a router, and let's say a lamp only uses a few hundred watts. So you could run that for days. And here are two other cool things about the Anchor Solix. So one is you can plug solar into the system really easily. Check this out. Anchor Solix sells a bunch of different solar products that you can easily plug into the battery so that while the grid is down, you can actually be making your own power from mm. the sun. Also, if you have an electric car or truck, it may be possible for you to power the battery from the inverter in your car or truck. Obviously, that depends on whether your car has vehicle to load, but many electric cars now do, like our Ford F-150 Lightning and our Rivian R1T. You can just plug it into the battery and keep it charged up. And I would argue that pretty much any car has that, you know, 12 volt cigarette lighter. Mm -hmm. And that would at least do something to help, uh, you know, charge back up your battery because it can take 12 volts as well. That's right. Yeah. The Anchor Solix can take 12 volts. That's, I didn't even think about that. And that's the thing. As people are experiencing more and more blackouts and we're becoming more and more dependent on power and the internet to live our lives, I would now argue that having some form of backup power is essential. Okay. But I still don't think that 3,800 watt hours is enough battery for backing up what I need. Okay. All right, well then all you need to do is expand and Anchor Solix has what you need. They sell expansion batteries so you can add another 3,800 watt hours and make your system 7.6 kilowatt hours. Can I add even more? Sure, you can keep expanding up to 53.8 kilowatt hours if that's what you need. And that's all modular. Yeah, it's all plug and play. You just stack it on top of each other and then you just plug in the wires and you have enough power to run your house. That would, I don't know, that would probably be for a couple of weeks. Wow, and these battery packs are movable. Yeah. So as you saw that first pack, the one that has the inverter in it, that has wheels and a handle. So even though it's heavy, you can still easily roll it around. And then the expansion packs, although those are heavy too, but yeah, you can just pop them on top of each other or lift them back down. So they're definitely heavy, but you can move them around. Exactly. I mean, that's great. So, I mean, if I'm moving, I could just take these with me. Yep. Or, I mean, if there's a flood or something, I could move them out of harm's way. Yep. I could take them to grandma's house if she was having a power outage. Yep. Or I could power my RV with them. Yep. Now, you said that you and Ernie wired this up yourself in an hour, but you're not a certified electrician. Yeah, in our jurisdiction, we're allowed to do our own electrical in our own house, and we know what we're doing. It really is straightforward. Everything is labeled. Everything felt completely safe. But depending on your abilities and your jurisdiction, you can decide whether to hire a qualified electrician. But, you know, do all of this at your own risk. Yeah. And I would say that if we did it in less than an hour, then a qualified electrician who does this all the time should be able to do it in an hour or less easily. So the installation costs should be not that much. Now, I mean, aren't these batteries going to cycle a lot? Like, and do I have to worry about charging them up past 80 percent and all that like I have to with some Teslas? No, the cool thing here is that this is lithium iron phosphate technology, kind of like what's going in the Model Ys right now. Right. So they're a little bit less energy dense, but who cares? You're not driving them around. Right. So they really don't care about being charged 
works beyond 80%, and you can charge them up to 100%, and they're fine with that too. Also, you don't have to worry about them going to zero. They don't really mind that as well. And they won't catch on fire like lithium manganese cobalt batteries sometimes do. So Anchor Solix's batteries have a five-year hassle-free warranty. They have 3,000 life cycles and a 10-year lifespan. Now, I just want to go back to something we just touched on, which is the solar part. For so many people, solar is complicated, right? It involves inverters and NPPT controllers and mounting things to roofs that could leak. But with these simple unfolding solar panels that Anchor sells, it seems like all you have to do is set them up on your yard, run a cable down to the basement where the battery is, and then plug it directly in because Anchor Solix has taken care of all that inversion stuff. Right, it's super simple to add solar to this backup system, which I think you're right, makes it extremely versatile. And I see here that they also have another kit which we could have gotten, which is the smart panel. What does that let you do? Yeah, the smart panel integrates with the utility grid and your rooftop solar system for maximum power efficiency and seamless backup. You don't even have to go down there when the power goes out and flick the switch. It does it for you. Wait, so if I have a solar system, but I don't have a battery backup system, I could actually integrate this battery with my existing solar that's on my roof. Yep. Because there's lots of people who have solar on the roof, they lose power, and then they can't, and use, they can't take advantage they can't of it. They can't use any of the solar that's on the roof. Exactly. This would, the smart panel would allow them to hook that solar up and it would instantly back you up when you lost power yep. to the grid. Isn't that cool? That's real. I mean, that's like power wall stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I can also hear a lot of people saying like, well, I can do all of this with a gas generator. You can't do all of this with a gas generator. You can't, uh, you can't hook up solar panels to it. Well, I mean, one big problem with a gas generator that I used to see as a contractor is a lot of people get a gas generator and then forget about it for a couple seasons. And then when you need it, middle of the night on a cold winter night, you go down there and, <laughs> and it won't start because they hadn't taken care of it and maintained it. And you just, you left stuff in there and so stuff got gummed up. Or you don't have enough gasoline for or it. Or other people will have, you know, the, the super special high tech generator that's in a special box somewhere on the, on their property. Um, and then it has to turn on every month. Right. And so you're going to go like, what? What's that noise? Is someone driving a tractor around outside? Yeah, and, and no. you, you need a yearly maintenance contract usually. And also they're loud. Yeah. And also you, they could kill you. Yes. <laughs> Carbon monoxide. There are some cases where, you know, the weather could be just right or you could put the generator in the wrong place, um, especially if it's a roll around one. Yeah. A lot of people put them in their garage or their basement where they shouldn't. And uh, that builds up carbon monoxide. So the nice part about the Solix is there's no carbon monoxide to worry about. It's extremely quiet. Yep. And you have infinite fuel if you buy solar panels. That's a good way to think of it. Yeah. I mean, sure, the solar panels cost something, but, you know, in the middle of a snowstorm, you're not going to want to like, oh, time to go to the gas station. And right. the gas station doesn't work because there's no electricity and the pumps don't work. You ever notice after a snowstorm, it's usually sunny out while they're trying to get your power back on. And yeah, you would have sun making power for you. Exactly. Now, one thing is that I'm just thinking about with this transfer switch. Mm hmm. I get to control whether it's on or off. Correct. So even with the power on and the grid supplying power to my house, I could still switch over to the battery. Correct. And if I'm making solar, then I can actually convert circuits in my house to be running off oh, of solar battery circuits. backed up solar circuits. Interesting. So what would you use that for? I mean, the first thing that pops into mind would be like grow bulbs. Um, oh, right. So you could grow stuff at home because worst case, like who cares if it if the lights shut off, right. it's not the it's end of the world. It's a cloudy day to a plant. Yeah, right. and um, th those bulbs usually take a lot of power. Right. Um, I know a lot of people like growing stuff indoors, you know, during the winter and stuff like that. So that's one possibility. Another one would be like, I don't know, Bitcoin mining, something oh, that's right. going to use a lot of energy that you don't necessarily want to be paying for. Right. And if you could be using about 600 watts worth or this goes up to 2,400 watts of solar yeah. just from the unit itself. So yep. without having to, you know, tap into anything on your roof. That's multiple computers. Right. And you don't even necessarily need the transfer switch because you can just plug into the battery on the side. Yep. Even while it's plugged into your transfer switch. I know. It's really kind of cool. It, it opens your mind to so many cool possibilities that were never possible before. I mean, I'm super excited about this. This gives people so many more choices and it's so flexible. I mean, my mind is racing with all the possibilities that I could use these battery systems for. So, I mean, thank you for hooking it up with Ernie because honestly, until I saw it hooked up, I couldn't really understand how a normal person would be able to kind of use this system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's it's so nice to see that it's actually fairly simple yeah. to hook up. I thought, you know, you're going to have to rip every, you know, wire out of your house apart or something just to no. rewire it in order to run, you know, two separate lines. It's using the same wires that are already in your walls. Exactly. So let us know down in the comments below if you have any questions. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. Now, now you know. You know.